Hey, Spooky. Would you like to play a game? Fuck no, I'm out of this, bitch. She knows what I'm up to. She doesn't like it. And I'm gonna need to drink a water. Oh my god, it tastes like shit! After I did the Toy Story NES bootleg video, I was thinking to myself, Hmm, what's the most logical step from here? What is the movie after Toy Story again? A Bug's Life Baby. That's right. There was a Bug's Life bootleg game. And we're gonna take a look at that ish right now. The Bug's Life video game was released in 1998 on the PlayStation, Game Boy Color, and PC, with a Nintendo 64 version following soon after in 1999. There appeared sometime, presumably in 1999, a Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis bootleg that was ripped straight from the Game Boy Color version. Not much is known about it, in fact no one knows when it came out or who even made it. Probably will never find out either. It will always remain a mystery. The Super Nintendo version was published by Devious Electronic Company, while the Genesis version was published by X-Boy, which was a name for the Taiwanese Unite Lucky Technology Company. That's pretty much all we know about this bootleg, so with all that out of the way, let's play the Super Nintendo version first. We're greeted with a picture of Ant Island, with Flick flying past numerous times, each time getting faster like a bad 2008 YouTube poop. Then we get the title screen, and if you look closely, the sky background is none other than the motherfucking Windows 95 boot screen. You son of a bitches. Then we're thrust into the game. The graphics, sound, and overall feel of the Super Nintendo version is no different than that of a plug and play game. Trivia: The soundtrack and sound effects come from the Disney game Bonkers. <laughs> The controls are god-awful. Rigid had barely any control over the jumping, which is a short-ass, poor excuse of a jump. You can sprint, but don't expect an increase in jumping range. More on that in a second. Don't get me started on fucking gaps. You gotta time that shit just right from the very last dot on one end of the gap to the very first dot across from it. The enemies in this game are grasshoppers, diglets, and mm, fucking bloatflies from Fallout. Throwing berries kill them like in the real, actually good games. Once you get past the fucking OCD as fuck gaps and the nuclear apocalypse flying thingies, you reach this vine right here, which I cannot for the life of myself get completely up. The jump's just too fucking weak. You can't jump from one leaf to the other. You just bump the other side and fall the hell down. I tried this shit for a good five minutes and couldn't do it. The aforementioned sprint does jack shit to help you. You just fall flat on your ass again. So I just gave up after I cured cancer, solved world hunger, and ended all violence everywhere before I was able to make this jump. You'd have better luck fucking beating off with an egg beater. This version just reeks of ass. Let's go to the let's go let's go to the Genesis version. Same intro with Windows 95 clouds, I Almost half expected the Windows 95 chimes intro to come in. When I see the Genesis version of gameplay, I don't see plug and play. I see somewhat of an actual game. The controls are somewhat better. Certainly a step up from the stiff ass controls of the Super NES version. There are a few extra enemies. Caterpillars, an extra variation of Bloatfly, and fucking dim straight from the movie with spider legs. A big majority of the sounds are ripped actually straight from the PS1 and PC versions of the game, including voice clips. Oh yeah! Now, will we have trouble hurling over this gap? The answer is hell no. Nailed that shit on the first try. Now, here's the million dollar question. Will I grow old and die before I make this vine jump? The jumping factually isn't nearly as bad in the Genesis version. 
Now with all these extra enemies to look out for, it made it much harder to advance in the first level. In fact, I couldn't make it past the second one without using save states. Eventually, I made it past the first level. The second level is a fucking doozy. You start off riding dim through these wood stumps, then catapulting over this big ass gap, then shooting infinite tucks and rolls through a cannon to kill these two grasshoppers. What brave little pill bugs tuck and roll were sacrificing their dumpy little bodies to eliminate the grasshopper race. Their efforts will never be forgotten. Hashtag never forget tuck and roll. There are four levels to this game. Ant Island, Find the Hero, In the Dark Hole, and Hang by a Thread. Like I said before, I couldn't get past the second level without using safe states since these webs are a bitch to jump on. In the Dark Hole wasn't that hard, you just need to find all the collectibles that reload your berry supply to fight through these grasshoppers or you're up shit creek without a paddle. Hang by a Thread is a flying level where you control Dim, who's carrying Flick on his back. You gotta avoid West Nile carriers, more bloat flies, Kevin Spacey, and boomerangs. When all's said and done, you get this nice little cutscene in this font that no one can read. Then, just like that, the game ends. So, what do I think in the long run? It's a rip of the Game Boy Color version, which is also hard as tits and suck assish. So, what do you get when you port a suck assish game to another console? Another suck assish game. It's the definition of the word slog when you look it up in a dictionary. It was a nightmare to try to complete, and I normally never use save states to cheat my way through, but for the sake of this video, I decided I should complete this game for myself. So, two out of five dog shits. Anyway, that concludes this video on the Bugs Life bootleg for the Genesis and Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Tune in next time for the next game. It's gonna be a double feature, so hang on to your nutsacks. Until next time, this has been Utonical with another spicy video. I love you all, and take it easy, fellas.